Well, thank you everyone for being here. I think we have a few more people outside and some others who may come and join us in a moment, but we're really glad you came to join us today. And as always, thank you to Courtney for putting together some food for us and getting everything, the logistics all arranged. So thank you to, to her. Um, Today we have um, a presentation that um, the idea emerged from some um, needs that some of our faculty have had in terms of their research projects. So um, we thought, hey, this would be a great idea for us to do this for everybody, and that way if you've got a project now, you might learn some things that can help you, but if you have one in the future, you could think about how it could help you in the future. So today we have Alex House who is the Associate Director of Communications Media and Media Relations at STRATCOM, uh, also known as Strategic Communications. And then we also have Paige Burton, who's the Senior Media Consultant at WVUA. And they're gonna talk with us about using media outlets in your research projects. For example, things like writing press releases, um, handling news interviews, and, and advertising. Um, so we are just really thankful that they agreed to participate with us today, and um, welcome. And uh, Alex, I think yours is up first. Can y'all hear me? I'm going to stay back here so I can see my screen. Uh, but yeah, uh, so um, I'm Alex House. Um, I don't know if I've worked with any of y'all. I do a lot of stuff over email, so I don't get to see everyone's face, even if I've worked with them for a long time. Um, but I've been in this position for about uh, seven months, so I'm relatively new. Um, and I've, before me, um, you might have worked with Shane Doral. You also may have worked with our research communications. Um, Adam Jones. Uh, he recently moved into a new role and our research writer is currently vacant. Um, but I wanted to go ahead and introduce myself just for any media relations. I can be a contact. I want you all to know that. My email is always open. Um, so I work under strategic communications and a lot of people, I and I even me, it took me a while to learn what all that encompasses. Um, this is what it all encompasses. Um, it's we, we do a lot and we're a big team of 60, but within that I work under communications, that department. Uh, we do a lot. Um, we handle internal and external news. We also uh, handle the editorial guide for anyone. Um, crisis comms um, falls within us and uh, a lot of other really fun stuff, um, things that pop up maybe once a month. Some of it is every day. Uh, but today I'm going to talk about the media relations side of things. That's the part um, that I'm mainly in charge of. Um, and under media relations, we try to be proactive, um, but just with the nature of the job, it's often reactive. Um, these are all ways that we get stuff in the media. Um, news releases and media pitches um, are our big ones. Those are how we get our professors out there. Those are my favorite. Um, tips, uh, tip sheets we send out weekly. Um, and I really want to talk about the tip sheets because that is something where uh, we get a lot of interaction from the media, but a lot of people don't understand how powerful it is. Um, that's something that we may have done a release a week ago, two weeks ago, and, we'll, and we won't get any traction on it. We put it on our tip sheet, and then all of a sudden we have three or four reporters calling us. Um, oftentimes, we may not send out a full release on it. It may be bad timing. It may be something on a different on a individual college's websites that we can't fit in our schedule or doesn't really work for the news center, but it's a way to get it out in front of media. It's how we handle a lot of events as well. Um, and then our experts directory. And um, that's our proactive uh, solution to the media requests that's under um, our reactive. Media requests are what uh, I handle day in and day out. We get at least one a day. I think I've topped out at 18 in one day. Say it, and that, that's not including the debate. That we, we don't count that in, um, in our numbers. But for a regular day, I think it, I mean, it ranges between maybe 1 and 20 a day would be safe. Um, so the value of working with media, this is what I think um, a lot of professors, a lot of staff and faculty need, need to be aware of what it can offer you. Um, one of it is to gain credibility with mainstream media. It's very easy to get something in a trade publication, and we can always do that. 
but it's really powerful to see your name in something like the New York Times, in the Washington Post, which is something that we see often. It's not a pipe dream. Um, being able to take your research that you talk about and make it where a normal person, your family and friends, maybe colleagues in another department, they can understand. So getting it out into the mainstream public and mainstream media, that's really our goal. Um, also, it's to get you published and boost your CV. It's another way to get you published. It's something else you can add to it. Um, published work is often uh, a very big criteria when, uh, after you have your doctorate when you're looking around and doing those things. And so if something like a CV or something in academia is important, this is a very easy way to get those published documents rather than have to do more research. Um, that's something that we can help with is that aspect of it. Um, so credibility trends, um, academic experts are considered the most credible sources. This is done, Muckrack, um, hand, they do, a, it's almost like a journalist social media. Um, but they do state of journalism every year. They talk to, uh, from local media to international organizations. They poll thousands of people. And what they found is academic SMEs are the most credible. And that's great for us. Um, 62, like the CEOs, but that's going downhill, which we also like, because we would rather hear, no one wants to hear their research talked about, you know, by someone higher up. They don't actually understand it, but that's just who we put in front of the camera. So we really like the people that have their foot in it, the ones that understand it. Those are the people that we love getting in front of the media so they can talk about the research that they're doing. Um, and then less than half of journalists find company PR pros credible, and that's me. Um, so this is where pitching really comes into play, where especially when we're talking about research, rather than doing a release, I love doing a pitch. And what a pitch is is just a simple email for me saying, hey, we had um, in the College of Nursing, this professor has exciting research on this, this. This is why it matters. If you'd like to set up an interview, let us know. And we get so much more engagement from pitches than we do a release. Um, so helping reporters help us, um, journalists want clicks. Um, that is, their jobs are on the line because of clicks. That's just the way that, um, I guess, the news media outlook is now. And to do that, we, we need to recognize that. So we need to figure out what's going to get them clicks. Um, so we look at current trends going on, and we try and apply um, this research to those trends. And sometimes it can be very... Um, out of the box. Um, it may not be something that uh, initially it may be like, I'm not going to talk about this. Like, why would I talk about this? But when you kind of dive into it, if you have an interesting angle and that's something you can pitch, then it could be a really good story and it can get a lot of credibility. Um, one I've been pushing a lot is um, the like Travis Kelsey, Taylor Swift. You know, naturally, who in academia could talk about that? What scientific is there? But, you know, we have social media professors that show how brands capitalize on stuff like this and use it and maybe how they take advantage of it. Uh, we had um, Jessica Maddox in the College of Communications. She's often talking to New York Times, CBS, NBC um, about social media trends and about this. You know, with the Super Bowl happening, can we talk about um, the types of grass, someone in agriculture? Um, maybe someone in physics that can talk about the anatomy of a throw. There's so many ways that we can go about these trending topics, and that's one thing that we're really trying to focus on because that's what reporters are looking for. Um, they also want data and because they need something that's going to beef their story. Along with clicks, the longer they scroll, the more ads they see because ads are now put in the middle of stories. So the longer their story can be the, the, and the more substance it has, the more likely they're going to do it. So this is why we like to look at finished research, um, stuff that have um, action items, things that have successes. We also find we get better stories that way. Um, so quality of coverage. This is something that I like to talk about a lot. It's um, because a lot of times when we say, hey, when we show success, we just show it generated X number of articles. So we, we put out this release, and all these people reported on it. But that doesn't necessarily, that's not necessarily a good thing, and that doesn't actually show how good, how, how successful we were. Um, so here is um, an example of a grant announcement. 
and then one of finished research. So one you can look at the headline and see, and this is one thing I have to look at, is UA's brand. UA's brand is very much represented in the research side of things, where the grant announcement really isn't. Granted, this was not our grant announcement, but we still weren't the focus of it. Um, the research story also made it national, whereas these grant announcements usually just stay local. Um, and on the side, I have the ad, those are the actual two stories side by side, just to show you how much more substantial the research story was. Um, it is just, as you can see, it is much longer. Um, and then I have these videos that just kind of show the difference. So a green announcement, you're looking at maybe a 20 second video and this is all it's gonna be. The University of Alabama is leading a project to give electric vehicle batteries a second life. The project is a partnership between Alabama Power and Mercedes. Sound. So we'll just scroll through it. This is about a 20 second clip. And if you look through, it's just stock footage. And it's just saying, hey, UA got this grant. They're gonna be partnering with these agencies and they're gonna do this. Um, it's about as short as you can get. Um, this one actually is probably a bit more substantial. Sometimes we'll only get about 15 seconds. It'll just be in a preview without an actual story. Um, this one, some and I'm research, just going to play it and kind of go through it. History this is on uh, some finished research that a professor did. Um, it, had, it went to a website. Um, it had a whole bunch of data that they could talk about. And I think this clip is three or four minutes long where they interviewed the professor. So you have a reporter talking about it. You have actual footage, and then you have the professor who's sitting here and talking about her work. And this is the stuff that we think is so much more quality than just, hey, we got money. Because a lot of, especially when it comes to the money, it sounds like an impressive number, but to a normal person, and I'm one of these people where I can't comprehend how much money it is. One million and 10 million, or one billion, those are all the same number to me. It's all an unobtainable number, so it doesn't mean anything. So an impressive number isn't necessarily click worthy even though we do know it's a lot of money and it's very important internally, something in the media is just, it's just one of, it's a big number. Um, so jumping on the bandwagon, this is where I talk about trends. This is something that the University of Georgia does really well. We always look to them. About a year ago, there was um, The Last of Us. It was a very popular video game. They made it into an HBO show. And it was all, it's all about like an apocalypse and zombies. Um, and I don't watch it, so I might be wrong about that, but it's all based on, a, on like this fungus. So they called a professor who studies, says, hey, could this actually happen? And we all know the answer is no, but they did a whole story on could it happen or what does this type of fungus, because they named a real one, what does it actually do? What does it actually affect? And they were able to show their research and this went, this went viral because it's, it's really cool hearing someone that actually can talk about it on this fictional thing. And uh, we've actually, we're, we're good friends with the people over in their communications field and we've talked to them about it and they said it took a lot of pooling of like, look, you know, we, we know this is weird. And, and the professor was like, I don't know, like that, I don't really, like, I don't know anything about zombie, like this is stupid. And they're like, no, but just hear us out, let's try it. And it, it paid dividends. <laughs> and so this is stuff that we really wanna try and do. Uh, we also have our experts directory. Um, this is how we proactively work on our requests. Um, and so our experts directory is on our new center. It's news.ua.edu. And it's somewhere that we have uh, professors who have willingly opted in. Um, and it has their email on it, contact information, a little bit of their bio. And it has their specific ex expertise. Now, this is still a work in progress on our end, but we're always trying to get new experts that, me that we direct media to directly, and they can find their own sources. They can contact y'all directly. And, and it's also, and I use it as a resource, because I can't possibly know every <laughs> professor on campus. And oftentimes, I get, when I get a request, it will be very off the wall. Sometimes it's, hey, I heard this, someone's doing the study, and I can track it down. Sometimes it's, hey, I'm doing a story on the best type of cloth for beach towels. So I have, and that, that was a real one. And we did find someone, um, I want to say it was in good housekeeping, um, but they were like, we heard you have a good design team, or like a good design program. Do you have someone that can talk about the ver like Turkish, Afghan, and whether it is the superior thing and why? And so this is kind of our way to help us, help reporters, and just kind of get your name out there without us really having to do, to do much. Um, we also uh, do featured experts. So this is 
These are ones we currently have featured and they're a little outdated, but we put a lot of these for the Super Bowl around Valentine's Day. Um, Jess Maddox is someone that I talked, talked about. Andrew Billings also talks about intersection of sports and mass media, so Super Bowl, talking about ads, easy win. Um, and so I always encourage everyone to become an expert. We're always looking for more. Um, couple requirements, and they're very easy. The first one is uh, just be responsive to requests. A lot of times I'm casting a very wide net. So I may ask you about, like, hey, I have this reporter. She's looking for this. Is this something you're willing to talk about? If not, do you know someone? Because oftentimes that's how I find it. It's not the first person I email. And so the one thing that we ask is just, you know, maybe remember my name. If it pops up in the email, just give it a quick, a quick glance. Um, and if it's not something you're able to do, you don't have time for, feel free to tell me. It's not going to stop me from reaching out unless you, unless you tell me to. Um, and um, also, we have reporters who just the way that their world works, where they work on hours deadlines. So oftentimes, I'll get an email, and it's, it may be 10 AM. Hey, I need to interview someone before 3. And which is very difficult for professors. It's something we talk about. And it's something the reporters know. But oftentimes, that can't. it's just the way that it works. Because um, oftentimes, you know, you'll be in a class. And you don't get out of the class until you, like, it's maybe 30 minutes at that deadline. But even just, hey, I just saw this. I am willing to do it. Do you want to see if they want to do it another day? Sometimes that works. Sometimes they can't. Sometimes they can. But just, I, you know, I can't do it. But how about this person? This person would be great. Feel free to reach out to them. Um, Another thing, and it's not the fun thing, but just understand, make it clear that you are speaking on your own expertise. That's something that we always need to ask for. Um, and just not speaking on behalf of the university. This does not come up often, but it does on controversial topics um, where they'll sit there and talk to you. And it's something that we very much encourage is talking about these things, um, sharing your expertise. But it'll say, well, how do you think the university feels about that? And that's one of those things that it's a protection for the university, but it's also protection for professors. And that's just one of those things to read the statement of neutrality to say, you know, these are my professional opinions. This is what I've studied. It's all I can talk about. Um, and then also just let us know if you do interviews, if someone reaches out directly and it doesn't come through me. We, um, we do monitor. We like tracking these things. And we take clips that we can send you, for you to have and you can download. And so we want to know um, just the way that that software works. Sometimes it can miss things if, the cer if certain phrases aren't said the right way or the captioning service doesn't get it right or makes a misspelling. We, we can miss it. So that's something that we always ask. Here's a QR code. If you would, it um, goes to our communication site on the strategic communications page, and the form is there um, to, to fill it out. If you'd like to be an expert, we are always looking for more. Um, and if you have a human gangle, um, or especially something that we don't have yet, which I don't believe we have any nursing professors. Um, so we would love to have that. Um, but we'd love to be part of it. So how else can we help you? Um, we, we offer media training. We don't uh, like to um, you know, just send you out to the wolves. Uh, a lot of times these, uh, these reporters are people that we work with day in, day out. We know their specific quirks. So we'd love to you know, talk you through that, make sure you're the most successful, you know, even give you a heads up of like, hey, they may ask you about this. Um, or if you, know, you are interested in doing interviews, but you are terrified. You don't, and like me, you don't like public speaking. Um, and so it may be that you're nervous, but you still want to share your work. That's something that we can sit and help you make it feel more com um, confident. We do it all the time, and it really does seem to help. Maybe you've done an interview in the past, and you didn't feel confident about it. You watched it. You didn't like the way that you sound, the way that you looked, that's something that we can talk you through. It could also be that someone reaches out on a subject that you do want to talk about, but you have a weird gut feeling. And you kind of want to just say, like, hey, I'm worried this is going to happen. You know, either how can I pivot from it if they do ask me about this? Or, you know, like, not, not should I do it, but if you want to just, like, I want to talk you through and make sure I'm comfortable with it. If you want us to go over, you know, maybe some mock interview questions, make sure um, that's something that we can always help with. Um, and that's how we can be a sounding board for you. Just you can talk through and make sure you're comfortable with it. Uh, maybe give some tricks of, oh, you know, maybe, you know, this part, maybe it rambled a little too long. Shorten that up because what you said was so powerful and we want to make sure to get that into a clip. That's stuff that we can help you with. Um, we always do. We can, I do Zoom uh, trainings with people all the time. Um, the other one is we can play the middleman. It may be that someone reached out to you, and maybe it's a reporter who's a little persistent. It's something you're not comfortable doing. If you don't want to be the one to decline, you can always ask us, and we can be the bad guy. Um, we are very happy to do that for you. Um, 
and especially if it's maybe a reporter that you have worked with a lot and you don't want them to stop coming to you, you just don't want to focus on this, feel free to pass it to us, let us know your concerns and we can handle it on your pass. Um, we also have other channels that are not sent to the media, but oftentimes if they do, it, it does gain traction and sometimes it is a bit more appropriate. So that's um, Inside UA, that's the weekly newsletter that you all get. Um, that's something that our team handles. It's really good for accolades. We love to shout out people through Inside UA. Um, on that same page, the communications page, you can submit news. Um, that's where you can, and I forgot to mention, you can submit news for media and for internal. Um, so we're always looking for stuff for that. Uh, Merit is a program that we love. It is our way to highlight students. Um, we, I don't think that we have ever said no to a merit release. What it does is it takes, we have um, all of our students in a database and we can, if they become an ambassador, if they get an internship, if they're on even, we send it out for the Dean's List for every student. Um, it sends a personalized release about them to their local media, to their um, high school, their local officials. And so this is our way to highlight students and we are always looking for that and there is nothing that is too small that we can send out through merit. And so if you have any, any students, I'm not even gonna say spectacular students, but just students that did something cool, please let us know. We love getting that kind of traction for our students because it's not something that we can do on our own on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, the only thing I think we need are the students' names and their email address. I might be wrong on that, but I know that there is some info we need from them, but it's, it's pretty simple. Um, and then research studies. We also, on our new center, we push research, story, or research studies. If you're looking for participants, feel free to let us know. We can add it to it, and we also publish those in our Inside UA. So if, you're, if you need that, you need um, us to help with that, then we also handle that. And so how can you help us? Um, don't be a stranger. My email is always open. My phone is always open. Um, if, if you just want to run anything by, by me, if you maybe have an idea but you're not too sure if it's something we can do, please just you know, let me know. We can talk through it and maybe decide if it's a good fit or where it can be a best fit. Um, so think outside the box when it comes to your expertise. If you're scrolling through social media and see something and you're like, oh, well, I did a study, and it may be so, like, it may be a huge tangent, but if, if you have something from your research or from your expertise that you can add to something you see on social media, let us know, because that could be a potential pitch for us. Um, and give us a head up, heads up when exciting things are happening, because we do love to share these things. A lot of times, you know, the reason that we may not be able to cover it is because we don't know about it. Um, so we always love to get in there early, um, and again, if the earlier we the earlier the better and we can it gives us time to figure out the best route to go rather than just the one that fits in that timeline um, we can always do more with more time one thing that we have on our one person we have on our team that's kind of new is a videographer um, that is specific to our communications department what he does rather than shoot the slow-mo and the really stylized commercial videos he shoots videos like a reporter does so he'll go around and shoot uh, b-roll he'll shoot um, you may sit down with y'all and do interviews and we can send those out to media for them to use so they don't even have to do the work. It's also great because we usually we'll link to a press release about the subject and also we, can, we have entire control over you know, what is said and a lot of times that can make professors who may not be comfortable in front of a camera, it, it gives you an outlet to still share your stuff without having to deal with a reporter at all. Um, so we always offer that. It's something that we really like to do and we're always seeing more ways to use that. Um, so if you're doing something very visual too that would have B-roll, that would be a great, um, a great avenue for that. Um, and so that's all I have. Um, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. I kind of sped through that. Um, but, but yeah. Any questions? I yeah. have a question. A few years ago, I had a, a study <coughs> published and I guess someone sent it to uh, your team because it was picked up and kind of spread through AP News. Mm -hmm. um, but because my research focuses on what, you know, some consider a controversial topic, I would be hesitant to try to get that type of attention at this point. So mm -hmm. do you guys provide any type of guidance or support about when to uh, have your research out and what kind of blowback it might come, <coughs> may come from that? 
Yes, we uh, we handle that a lot. We've we have a lot, especially. I mean, we've seen the news over the past couple of weeks. It's been a little crazy. Um, we've had a couple stories that we are we've put on hold because we we know it's a great story and it's something that we have every intention of sending out. But we know if we send it out this week, it would it would not focus on the research. It would be used for fodder. And so a lot of times we talk a lot about timing, and that's something that we can really help out with because. Uh, you know, that's the last thing we want to do is for someone to pick it up with the wrong intentions. Um, and so that's one of those things we're bringing it to us. And even if, you know, you don't see anything in the news, but you know it's a controversial subject and you want to make sure that, again, it's going to be shown in the best light, that is where you can come to us because we may, we may know something going on in, in the future. And that's one of those things that we can really offer guidance on. Um, the, uh, but we, we handle controversial subjects all the time. We still promote stuff like that. It's nothing that we shy away from, for sure. But we just are very strategic in when we do that. Um, and so that's one of those things that we can definitely help with. Yeah. Yes. Hey. I just want to back Alex up and um, encourage all of you to, I know we've sent these around, like Alex said, and you guys have Please consider scanning the QR code or going to that website and submitting if, if your information, if you're comfortable with me reaching out to you. But um, we should have nursing workers and we have a lot of expertise in the field. Yeah. And you will not be bombarded. Um, I think the things we get asked about the most are I feel like I'm always calling someone in like political science or the law school. We get a lot of policy um, experts, but even for those that I use all the time, I, I mean, I'm not, I may be emailing them once a month at most. You're not gonna be bombarded. Um, we do have some that talk to the media every week on their own accord, um, and I, but I also don't believe that that's from our experts directory as much as I would love to take credit for that. Um, so don't feel like by putting your stuff out there, you're gonna be bombarded. Um, it, is, it is gonna be a, a, a a pretty comfortable flow, um, and a lot of stuff is still gonna. A, a lot of reporters, just because you know they're very comfortable working with me, we have a good relationship. So a lot of times that we will, um, they'll still just come straight to me. And but I use the experts directory as well, so so it helps me. Um, but so we encourage anyone and everyone, and also really highlight what your like specific um, topics are, because that it also kind of stops me saying like, oh, you do nursing, I have this that you might be able to do. So it may also kind of help filter that out as well. Um, is it um, best if we always come through you or go directly to them? I mean, what's the, the, the correct chain of command? Well, Alan's getting way in on that too. Uh, I always like to be LinkedIn. So if you want to go ahead, if you have something and you want to email Stratcom directly and copy me or email me directly and copy, you know, at some point they're going to bring me in or I'm going to bring them in. So, um, you know, could go ahead and just copy everyone and then we're, <laughs> then we're all already in the loop but um, either way I think the information will be shared across the board so mm -hmm. And then and it is oftentimes because you know we are we are only a staff of ten. We have three writers fully staffed. We currently have two. So oftentimes it's not that we don't want to show something. It's just we have to we have to look at how busy that week is for other stuff. We have to look at if we have the bandwidth. If you know we can't hit it until it's if it's something that's newsworthy at this specific time, and we have to push it off. It may just not work. But a lot of, and this is where this the tip tip sheet we call it preview comes into play. We can also and it's something that we haven't really been able to do yet. But we really want to start linking to colleges, uh, websites at all. Do you, Rosemary, do you all have a, you have your own news site? We have a research tab on our site mm -hmm. um, that, you know, includes people's like research interests and stories <coughs> occasionally, but it's, yeah. it's not, um, it's not like super timely. Yeah. You know, I mean, anytime we post a release or a story, it is linked to the research page, so yeah. that's probably where we want to send people, but, um, And it could be that we just, it may not, you know, it may not fit on the news center, but it fits better on the nursing site. But preview is a way that we can link to it. And I mean, I, I'll have a story that we did a, we will do a full fledged release on and 
we will send it out at the perfect time. We, and it's one of those things that feels like a slam dunk and we won't get anything until preview rolls around and we put it in and then all of a sudden, I mean, I, in the preview, just, we, we just put little blurbs about what each one is. We link to it, and reporters really seem to be receptive of that at the beginning of the week. Um, so, and that's one thing I really want to stress is that preview is not like a consolation prize. Um, it's just our way of sharing more stories, and it, and it is truly often more effective than the actual release. Um, so if that's something that we suggest, I, don't want, I just don't want it looking like a consolation prize. I think it has to be a current student, um, the way that it's linked in. I can ask, and I'll let Rosemary know. So that is a good question. And the students have to opt in. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think they have a really good opt-in rate, but yeah. they have to say they're comfortable with their news being shared with their parents. Yeah. I want to say, I mean, the opt-in rate, I'm, it's been a while since Stephanie told me. Um, I don't personally handle the merit, but I want to say it's in like the 80s. Isn't it great? I feel like it was something like that. Yeah. Um, and I think even if they don't, I want to say that they even get it, if they haven't opted in yet and we put it in, they'll, I think they get like an individual, they'll get an email that says, hey, are you okay with this? So it, we can like retroactively do it. But yeah, students like their news being shared, especially in their hometown, so we don't, we don't really struggle on that aspect. This yeah. is kind of a simple thing, yeah. but just in case you're new and don't know this, mm -hmm. um, even to use the logo, the UA logo, mm -hmm. we all need to go through Stratcom, and, mm -hmm. and Rosemary can help us do that, but mm -hmm. just want to make sure everybody knows that. Yeah, I do too, and I'm in Stratcom, and I still have to go, go through that. So uh, it's, uh, that's one thing that we really are trying to stress, is just we're here as a resource for you. Um, we don't like being looked at as an iron hammer. Um, just our goal is to, to be the most effective and, and share the or share our stories in the most effective way. And that in because of that, it just might not be the original way that, that is presented. Um, and I feel like grant announcements are always we we talk about this all the time. We're just saying, hey, we got this grant. You know, it's not that we want to, we don't want to share it. We just want to share it in, you know, a couple years when um, we can show results from it. Um, we just really like to be results oriented and also it's just a so much better and cleaner way of getting y'all in front of the media because you don't have to talk about what ifs. And reporters sometimes can go a little off the wall on their questions and so it's just a way to kind of, you know, if, if you have results, you have results and you can talk about it. If it's a bunch of, you know, we want to do this, we think we're going to do this, or, you know, this is what we want to do but in phase two, but we don't know if we have the funding for phase two yet, so we can't talk about that. And a lot, and reporters won't understand that, so they'll keep asking you and not really get what they are trying to get and so it'll be a short story. Um, so that's one of those things that we're really trying to avoid. And to piggyback on that, like we, we can still post on our pages yeah. about we still want to share the grant funding. I mean, yeah. like I said, it's still a very exciting thing. And we want to get that word out there, but it just might be that they're not going to pick it up mm -hmm. to send on to media until we have to deliver. Yeah. And don't get me wrong, we still share green announcements. Um, we just might not, we just aren't able to share everyone. And so we do like, and again, it's, it's not a, hey, like, let's wait a couple years, but like, let's look at the ones that are finishing up right now. And that's the ones that we really want to focus on. Um, but also while you're doing your research, you know, keep, keep it in mind that this is something that when you're done, we want to pitch. So and I, while I know you're getting your data anyway, so make sure you get those data right down. Hey, this is really cool that my mom understood. So that's just a good thing. If your mom can understand it, that's what we want to share. Um, and so that's just something to kind of think of while you're going through all that. Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah. Appreciate, appreciate it. Okay, well, thank y'all so much for having me today. My name is Paige Burton. I am with the Digital Media Center and WVUA. Um, yes, thank you so much. Um, Rosemary, I came to Rosemary because I saw um, that y'all had a grant that, I don't know if it was the one that she put up there with Terry Sewell, um, but we're doing her production today for her campaign. So just uh, kind of rounds out how, how we got here. Uh, but we are able to provide for you guys a marketing arm that you don't have 
<laughs> built in within the College of Nursing, right? Um, I'm actually very uh, excited to be able to hear Alex's presentation because I had no idea really what the differences were. I knew it had a lot to do with like brand and a proven brand. I knew that's what strategic communications did, but I wasn't really sure how we were different. And so that was awesome opportunity for me to hear that. So I will know what the difference is. Um, but at the Digital Media Center, we have WVUA 23, which um, I don't know if this particular, like our news station is gonna be something I'm gonna focus on, but I am gonna go through it because uh, I'm not really sure the opportunities that we can use the news station. It's more of our digital products. But just briefly, WVUA covers uh, the Birmingham DMA. It's kind of uh, part of the problem with WVUA is that we get lumped in into those Birmingham stations, right? So we're not ever going to have an affiliate like an ABC, NBC, CBS, because there are already those Fox in those DMAs. So that's why we're a Cozy TV affiliate. Uh, we're one of two learning labs in the United States, which is a really, really cool thing to be able to say. Um, us and Mizzou have an active uh, affiliated news station. So we're really, really proud about that. We send out so many kids every year straight into anchor positions, uh, which is really awesome. So there's a little bit of about of our coverage. Uh, this is our team right now. We have been going through a bit of a transition. Uh, Chelsea Barton was there for a long time, Mike Royer. Um, they've all moved on to different opportunities. Right now we have Richard Scott, who has been there 17 years as our chief meteorologist. Uh, Jabari Pruitt, who currently is doing our five, six, and 10 news. Um, and he's doing a great job at that. And then Gary Harris on sports, most people know Gary. Um, this is just some of our programming outside of the news, which would be Football Friday that Gary does. We have Tider Insider. Uh, we don't have some of the stuff that we have had for the past 17 years because now Coach Saban's not there. So we had Saban Soundbites. We had the Nick Saban Show. Um, obviously, that's not in here because we are waiting for what's going to be replaced. So we're looking forward to that. Um, now, this is really more the bulk of where I was um, hoping to speak with you guys today. So the difference between what we can provide you at the Digital Media Center and WVUA is uh, different between us and Stratcom is where they're able to help you create these stories, help you get these stories out there. Uh, we're going to be more of like your advertising arm, right? Uh, where I believe, and she can correct me if I'm wrong, they can place certain advertising, but we do it through a programmatic vendor which makes us a little bit different to where we can, um, we have access to 90% of the internet, 10% of it's the stuff you don't wanna be on, right? Um, and we're able to really hone in on exactly who you're trying to get. So when I first, first spoke with Rosemary, I believe the grant had something to do with graduate program maybe, or we were talking about graduate programs because I believe we discussed that your nursing program, y'all don't need to advertise for that, right? Y'all are at capacity for like the students that are enrolling into the nursing school. But at the graduate level, that's where we had kind of discussed, and I'm using this as an example, that's the kind of things we can help you with. So for example, um, we can take anything that we create, which is another thing we can do where they have people who are like, um, news anchors who can go out and help you create the story, which obviously we can do that as well with our team, but it would be a little bit different. But we actually have a studio facility to where we can do full productions, right? Um, we can do um, televised, if y'all ever wanted to do something where you had like a, like a TED talk for nurses, I don't know what you'd call that, but you know, that's the idea. Like we have the facilities to be able to do that and broadcast it. We have the facilities to be able to uh, take you guys in and create a great commercial campaign from start to beginning or start to finish that we can put up and run. Um, for example, again, for the graduate program that would touch on why we need graduate nurses, how they can find more information, that situation. So a lot of what we would be doing with that would be on the internet because WVUA, uh, the television station is just locally here in Tuscaloosa, which I think that maybe there should, there, there could be some things we could do with them, but I'm really leaning more towards these um, digital services. So the programmatic display, that's what I was speaking about earlier, that you can really uh, make a finite uh, person, right? I need a woman who is 
25 to 35 who has already gotten her RN, who is shown through her activity on the internet that she's looking to make that forward progression in her um, degree program. We can tell you where those people are. We can tell you like where they live, where they visit, what they do. It is, it's kind of creepy. I know it kind of creeps everybody out. Everybody's like, oh, big brother, right? <laughs> it is a little creepy, but um, that is how we are able. And honestly, um, as times went on, there have been a lot of studies that show that people actually now are kind of liking it because they're not getting ads that have nothing to do with them, right? We're not seeing ads that are just like, well, why are you advertising that to me? I don't need Rogaine. Right? I'm not balding, so that sort of thing. So we do the programmatic display, and that can show up on Google, but also on all of those other, um, like Bing, Yahoo, we have the access to all of those platforms, and all of those platforms have their own individual data that we also get access to, which makes that, um, again, more finite to be able to target those specific individuals. Um, we have social media advertising, the OTT streaming video, that is where um, I feel like a lot of this is going. So that would be your Hulu, um, your YouTube television, those types of streaming services. And again, we can be very finite in the households that we're hitting there. What does this household look like? How much money do they make? Where do they live? What are they looking at on the internet? Those are things that we can do, and we can even be like, we only want to be on a big device, right? We don't want to be on a small device. I can tell it large screens only, only on their TVs, or if y'all want, only on your, because if you wanted them to click something, maybe to go fill out a form, maybe we do only on their mobile devices because you can't really click a form on a television. So there's just all different ways to kind of make this make sense for everybody and that you take the money that you have to advertise and get the most out of it. Um, search engine marketing, y'all all probably know what SEO is, how that works. The, the top three, are those are the sponsored. And then everything out after those top three ads is gonna be your organic searches, right? And I have, I've, did this for the school of nursing. I didn't do it right before I came, I probably should have, but when I originally started talking to Rosemary, um, if you vanity search, which a vanity search for the College of Nursing at the University of Alabama, Capstone College of Nursing, University of Alabama, you get literally 15 paid ads before you even find the University of Alabama. Now, that means that those people who are showing up when I type in y'all's names, that means they have bought your name. So that when somebody specifically goes in and types Capstone School of Nursing, University of Alabama, there are a lot of people right now that are paying to be way ahead of y'all, that are wanting those eyeballs because they know that this is a program that people want to go to. So they're literally buying the name, which they're legally able to do, and sending their, those people, hope, hoping that those people click on what they see first before they find you guys. So I just thought that was pretty interesting. Um, the geofencing, again, that is uh, if you had high schools, right? You know that you get a certain amount of students from a particular high school and y'all wanted to target them. We could put a fence around that high school, hit their phones when they go and get on their Wi-Fi at home, it starts hitting their house. Um, so it kind of follows them around that way. And then the search engine optimization, again, Oh, it's crazy. The, this technology. We have. Um, bad way. That's what's terrible. That's what's terrible. We have um, something that I'm doing with Bryant Bank right now that is I'm serving OTT that's streaming only to large devices. And then I can tell them at the end of the month if somebody from that household walked into their branch and how many times and which one. And that's the kind of stuff that I do in this. I don't even really understand how that works. Is it, is it because they've got their phone on them? And I would have to assume that they're on their phone, in their home, on the Wi-Fi. And then when they leave, then it tracks them. And at some point, it knows that geoping, when they get in that geofenced area, and they said, this is the phone that was in this home and saw our advertisement. Yeah, it's really cool stuff. Uh, well, cool for an advertiser, maybe creepy for other people. <laughs> yes. Um, so is that from the 
Um, it's really. I know the geo. I know the pings around on the different whatever, but is it also from the apps? That, you know, because a lot of times we don't read the information the apps. You know, we download them, but we don't read what they say. Hey, like what they what you're opting into. You know, wherever and wherever. I think it's your location services too. It, it is a combination of all of those things. And honestly, I've seen somebody recently do a whole thing where they bought a new phone and they didn't get a service on it and they never did anything but turn it on. They never connected to anything. And then were able to show that even that phone with no service, with nothing, was still being tracked somehow. So there's something in the devices that I think, that's just my personal belief, there's something in the devices that is doing that. It's my theory that they also are listening to things that you say. It's not that rude because there are plenty of times when I've never searched for anything, but I might say a word, mm -hmm. I want to buy a, and all of a sudden I'm getting 15 ads for it. Yeah. Right. They're listening as well. Well, when you give them access, have you, you remember when they ask, can I have access to your pictures? Can I have access to your microphone? When you say yes, you're giving them access to everything you say and everything that's inside your phone. They can look at it, and they do. Um, but what we're here to do is to help funnel the right people to you guys to help what, grow whatever y'all need to grow outside of the, the freakiness of it. And it's only getting, it's only getting crazier. I mean, one day they're going to be able to read our thoughts, and it's just going to pop up, you know. Um, we are very proud of our production team. I think this is a strong thing for you guys, especially if y'all ever need any, like, in-house production. We have Emmy award-winning production team. If you come in the DMC, there's a big case with about eight Emmys in it. So we are very proud of our production capabilities. Um, and our graphic design, we have awesome graphic design team. Um, you know, with that Emmy that I just mentioned, all of this is encompassed in that. The script, the copyright, you know, the production. That is what we are proud to be able to create there. Um, and on top of that, we're also unique in that we have interns and students, which gives us a little bit of an edge because we're able to listen to them, the next generation that's coming in. What is the things that they like to see? How, what would the angle would they take? And just coming from a corporate world into this setting, I feel like that's extremely valuable because you don't have that in a corporate setting. So even these students who aren't through their degree programs yet, but they're very interested, they have a passion for it, and that helps us with these really cool creative ideas. Um, and that's basically the end of my WVUA portion. The other stuff I had in here, which y'all can um, look at with me if you have a packet. If not, Courtney is going to send these out. I'm not going to go through all of this stuff, just briefly kind of talk on them. Um, this is uh, our digital product, right? This is going to tell you everything that our digital products can do. And um, something my old boss used to say would be, keep it simple, stupid. He would say, kiss, keep it simple, stupid. So we're not having to reinvent the wheel when it comes to higher ed and digital marketing. There have been a lot of great successful campaigns and a ton that we've done personally that you can look and see that we have a strategy bundle already created for higher ed. Um, it's going to tell you the best pathways, uh, the current trends, um, the basics, how you can step up the whole game for your marketing um, and how to, to do that in a way that you're, again, capitalizing on those dollars. Um, then we have the education recommendation guidelines. This is going to be um, like when I was speaking on the geofencing, the targeting, the words. This is going to be what helps us create when we decide, okay, we have a campaign where we want to recruit grad students. Okay, so let's go back to this and look at what, how we can make that from the campaigns that we've seen a lot of success in. So that's what this one is. Um, and then the rest of them, again, just stuff that y'all can peruse over when you have time, it's our case studies. Uh, and they're all higher ed case studies to show you that, again, we have a pretty good grip on how to uh, reach these people and the most effective ways to reach them. Um, and that is really where I think that we would be a strong connection for the, the College of Nursing. Yes, ma'am. Um, so if we were writing a grant and wanting to target a county on social media for like a health behavior change, how would we know how to write that into the grant budget? 
Could we contact you and ask your budget? Yes, okay. I'm so glad you asked that. So I'm currently working with NOAA with a, a big grant for NOAA, and we're doing a four-year campaign with them. And, again, that's kind of how I, after I did that, I was like, wait, let me go into the rest of these colleges and see what kind of grants they got going on. Uh, but, yes, so with NOAA, what happened is they did have to go back. Like, they had, a, so say it was $300 million that they had total and they had earmarked a specific amount for that advertising purpose. When they decided to go with us for that advertising, the grant had already been written, so they had to go back and write us into the grant. Like I had to give them my information, they needed to know stuff about our station. Now, I believe, again, I would have to double check, but if you were doing it on the front end, that you would just say, hey, this is who we work with, we have earmarked X amount of dollars, and then when you're writing the grant, you could just go ahead and put that in, if that's how you wanted to do it. Right, could we contact you for an estimate? Like, could oh, we, yes, could I, I'm sorry, yes. How much do I need to budget in? Oh, absolutely, you're saying like a, um, kind of like a proposal for whatever campaign. Right. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry, I thought you were asking about how to be written into the grant. No, I was just wondering about cost on the front end. Yes, um, we have also, I don't know if I mentioned this, and I don't know if y'all would be interested in it at all, but with the College of Information, I mean, I'm sorry, the College of Communications and Information Sciences, we also have the research program. So that is one big thing that NOAA decided to go with us for is because we could provide the research throughout their four-year campaign and track what works and what doesn't. Um, and it's a really, really cool thing because, you know, back in the day, like, research is a bunch of surveys. You know, and, and over time, people kind of guessed how you would want to be answered, right, depending on what it is. So this research is all biometric. So they hook you up to all these machines, and they make you watch these advertising, and they're tracking your eyes, they're tracking your heart rate, they're tracking your, your uh, what is it, your brain waves? Brain waves, they're looking at that stuff as you're watching it. And so they have a way to tell, you know, and then they do the survey part on the back end as well. But those biometrics are really cool. You can see when somebody's heart starts beating fast or if they, you know, if they're sad, something in their brain waves change or whatever. And that's just a really cool arm that, again, other agencies, other ad agencies aren't going to be able to provide. And, of course, we obviously want to keep it in the house, you know, with the University of Alabama. Um, but are there any more questions? I'm sorry, I kind of, that was pretty nervous, so I hope I covered everything. I, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, can you give us, I guess you have to give an estimate an, 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 uh, based on anything we might request, but are there any parameters um, so that we have some sense of what something might cost so that we could begin to think about it as we work on grant proposals or funded projects that we might want to advertise? Yes, ma'am. Well, that is really going to be on a case by case. It's going to determine, like, how big is it? How long is it? Uh, who are we targeting? Because, again, when you get into those targeting factors, it's all different. Like, if you start getting really finite, then it gets more expensive. Or if you cast a broad net, it's a lot, um, you know, more affordable. So that would be something on a case-by-case -case basis. However, I can tell you that uh, a successful campaign that I've done for somebody similar was around five grand a month. And you typically want to run them between three and six months to see any kind of movement and then judge it after that point. So if it's a heavier campaign, um, then you probably the three-month mark. But I would say about five grand is, I wouldn't ever go below that for something like this. Again, y'all will have to remember y'all are going to fight that name because of how y'all are going to fight people for your own name. So that will also drive up the cost a little bit. I got you so <clears throat> Having to like, yeah, fight the people that are paying for your name. So then that drives up the price as well. And it, again, it just depends on what platform. But most successful campaigns on the internet are not going to be below five grand a month. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I just wanted to give some other sort of examples, maybe to turn the heebie-jeebies about the tracking into the positive. Um, when I was the page and I met, I think it was summertime, and so we used, we talked about his stuff. Um, we talked about, I think Dr. Cody was getting ready to do her back to school. You know, we were just thinking about projects like that where you're really trying to get 
specific counties. You're trying, you know, we're only going to be in Greene County for this event, or we're only going to be, you know, figuring out how to use your dollars to actually get them to those people. Um, so this is a great resource to try to figure out, you know, we don't need to reach everybody, or we don't need this person from New Jersey to know about this, because we really only need Central Alabama participants for, um, so, you know, if you do have a specific group you're reaching out to, this could be a great resource. And then I also, I hope I'm right about this, but just a little plug for Dr. Oliver and Dr. Wood's event tonight. Um, y'all worked with OPUA for the video production. We right? did. Yes. The video. So y'all can come tonight and see some great examples of, um, you know, we're very fortunate to have Patrick and, and our team here who, you know, is great with the camera, but, but we also know that there's only so much we can do here. You know, we can, when we, look outside of the building, we can open up to a lot lot more things. So anyway, you're gonna see some examples tonight, so y'all stick around. <laughs> well, are there any more questions for me right now? Thank you for sharing. No, absolutely. Thank yeah. you guys for having me. And I